Yes, hello. This is Jehovah Shalom a cappella Uganda and we are going to praise and worship in different hymns. And the first song that we can perform is How Great Thou Art. Amen. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider thy works, thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. The Morning 
by the bright riverside when all sorrows has drifted away I'll be standing at the portals when the gates open wide at the cross of life's long weary face you tomorrow I can face my tomorrow amen I fear not because he lives amen. God son is son and they call him Jesus 
Jesus, he came to die. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. Sing with me because he lived. Is my dear friend. Like one piece. One piece like a like river. Like a river. Okay. Really? Really? Yeah, okay. really. But before that, there's a song that I was thinking about, mm -hmm. and it has this words For whatever it takes mm. to be like you, Jesus. That is what I'm willing to do. Yeah. I'll trade sunshine for rain. Comfort for pain. Oh my God, I wish we sing that song. A voice. Yes, there's a voice. Calling. Whispers 
in Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're going to be in our night meeting, but before we do so, before we start with our song service, we'll pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for protecting us throughout the course of the day. Oh Lord, as we go through this prayer meeting, oh God, I'm asking you for your divine guidance and protection. Be with us, tabernacle with us. Help us to give you honor and praise and help us to magnify your name. And Lord, help us to open up our hearts to you through prayer. And Lord, where the praises go up, the blessings will come down. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so our first hymn is hymn number 258. Hymn number 258. Hymn number 258. Baptize us anew with power from on high. With love, O oh, refresh us, dear Savior, draw nigh. We humbly beseech thee, Lord Jesus, we pray. With love and the Spirit, baptize us today. Unworthy we cry, unholy, unclean. O oh, wash us and cleanse us from sin's guilty stain. We humbly beseech thee, Lord Jesus, we pray. With love and the Spirit, Baptize us today. O heavenly dove, descend from on high. We plead thy rich blessing in mercy, draw nigh. We humbly beseech thee, Lord Jesus, we pray. With love and the Spirit, Baptize us today. O oh, list the glad voice from heaven it came. Thou art my beloved, well pleased I am. We praise thee, we bless thee, dear Lamb that was slain. We laud and adore thee. Amen and Amen. Our second hymn is hymn number 260. 260.
Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. At this time, we're going to have some prayer emphasis. We're going to have two. And our first one is going to be about give, giving thanks and adoration and confessing to God. And the second one is for our teachers, that they are respected for the great work that they are doing and that they will be blessed when they see their student progressing and especially including the church teachers. So at this time, I'll ask Brother Dean Langmore to pray for giving adoration, confession, and thanksgiving unto God. Good evening, brethren. At this time, let us get in the attitude of prayer. Most kind, loving, eternal Heavenly Father, it's a great privilege, dear Lord, to be here once more again, dear Lord. We want to say thanks once more again for being with us through this day of toil and labor, dear Lord, and for taking us here tonight to praise and to magnify thy name. Dear Lord, in a time like this, dear Lord, when we look around us, dear Lord, there are so much things to be discouraged, dear Lord, and to, you know, give up. But dear Lord, there are so many things yet to give thanks for. And for that, dear Lord, we just want to say thanks. First of all, dear Lord, we want to say thanks for our immediate family, dear Lord. And also, you know, for the church family at large, dear Lord, we ask that you may bless and keep each and every one of us, dear Lord individually dear lord and also collectively we ask that you may help dear lord that we may cherish this whole thing of you know family togetherness dear lord as our society drift more and more dear lord from you know not having good and perfect family dear lord we should see it as a blessing dear lord when we have good and wholesome fam family dear lord and still abide by good family values in a very special way, we pray also for the young and also for the old in the church. We ask that you may bless and keep them also, dear Lord, especially for the young people, dear Lord. We ask that you may be with them, dear Lord, in a very special way, as there is so much they have to face each and every day, dear Lord. They are bombarded by so many things from conventional media, social media, dear Lord. But we ask, dear Lord, that you may help them that they may draw nigh to thee, that you may help them, dear Lord, that they may trust in thee, and that their thoughts, dear Lord, may be turned towards thee. In a very special way also, we pray for the teachers in the church, dear Lord, that you may give them that special faith, that you may give them that level of alertness, dear Lord, that level of faith to do what they do, dear Lord, to educate their Lord in these trying times. We ask that you may help that as they impart to the young ones, dear Lord, that they may, you know, be wise in doing so. You can see the home that many of these children are coming from. And I know, dear Lord, that, you know, it is very hard for the teachers as they, you know, try to educate the youngs. But dear Lord, we ask that you may give them a very special you know, strength that they may endure. I want to say thanks once more again, dear Lord, for providing for us, dear Lord, health and strength, dear Lord, and also for us to work and for us to help others and for us also to give back to thee. Help us never to take anything for granted, dear Lord. Help us always to have a grateful attitude, dear Lord. And in a very special way, we ask that you may continue to provide for us so that we may be able to help ourselves and to help others, dear Lord, and to also help thy cause and to hasten thy coming. Thank you once more again, dear Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayers, I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time. 
uh, sing two verses of hymn number 260, and then I'll invite the presenter for the evening to come. Hymn number 260, Hover o'er me, Holy Spirit. Over o'er me, Holy Spirit, be my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence, come, oh, come and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, O oh come and fill me now. Thou canst fill me, gracious spirit, though I cannot tell thee how. But I need thee greatly, need thee. Come, O oh come and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, O oh come and fill me now. I am witness, full of witness. At thy sacred feet I bow. Bless divine, eternal spirit, fill with love and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, O oh come, and fill me now. Cleanse and comfort, bless and save me, bathe, oh, bathe my heart and brow. Thou art comforting and saving, thou art sweetly feeling now. Fill me now, fill me now, Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence, come, O oh, come and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now, Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence, come, O oh, come and fill me now. Good evening, everyone. Let me say good evening to those who are online joining with us tonight at our night of prayer, Wednesday night of prayer. It's indeed a, a privilege to be back here um, with you. God has been good throughout the week thus far. And he continues to show his goodness, despite how things may look. So, I believe that God is still in the business of taking care of his children. And so, if we just continue to trust the unseen hand of God, then we will notice that, indeed, he is very near and dear to us. Tonight, as was said earlier, it's prayer night, and so normally we cut the preaching and we do more praying. 
And if there was a time that we need to pray is now. I want to take you to the scripture that we are looking at. It's Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. And I will just read the last verse, and then I'll pray. It says, But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, we thank you so much for your words. We thank you for the ability to hear and understand. Lord, as your words go forth now, I pray, Heavenly Father, that it will come straight from you, that, dear God, as you open my mouth, help me to declare your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse 38 says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. The caption tonight is, At the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, he appreciated a quiet time. He especially liked to spend time with his hearers, and the, the, his hearers ought to also love to spend time with him, because Jesus would have always had something important that is to be said for their soul salvation, and he longed also for human tenderness, courtesy, and affection. Those who received the heavenly instruction that Jesus was always willing to impart he was also ready to impart with great blessing. As multitudes would have followed Christ day in, day out, through open fields and through rocky terrains, he would unfold to them the beauties of the natural world that would speak to something bigger than this world. It spoke more about the kingdom of God. He saw to open their eyes, their eyes and their understanding, so they may not, that they might know who it is that was speaking to them. It was indeed the same voice, the same person of the Godhead who spoke, and it was done. Jesus and his disciples would have come to Mary's home in Bethany. Some say it's Martha's home because it is perceived that Martha was the eldest. And although Martha opens her home to them, it says here that, And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard him his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. I know many of us, they, it's not necessarily a tradition, but um, it's something that we all do. We, we hear of um, our relatives, our good friends, they are coming to stop by or they're just passing through. And the, the, the thing that we do is that we try to prepare. And we get involved in so much preparation that it might even cost us because we are trying to go out of the way to ensure that our environment, our surrounding, 
It's something that is pleasing not just to the eye, but very much pleasing to those who are going to visit. And so, can you imagine if somebody turns up to your house unannounced? You know, you're trying to push that thing over there and let it fit in the corner properly. You're trying to sweep. If it is that it, the place needs to sweep, you're trying to um, get certain things out of the way so that things don't look so bad. And this was what Mary was occupied doing. She was trying to make sure that her guest was very much comfortable and that the surrounding was pleasing to his sight. But it says here that Martha was distracted. Can we become so distracted in our preparations that we, we miss the idea of who it is that we're entertaining? And here it is that Martha was so much occupied with all that was, you know, to be done in her space that she forgets who it is that is in her space, that is who is her guest. Time was flying and so she is at work hard in the kitchen trying to prepare the meal. She is working to the point, I am just imagining that she's sweating at this point and anxiety fills her heart as she tries to do what needs to be done so that she can make sure that everything around her is satisfactory. And then overwhelmed with the workload, recognizing that, guess what, there's somebody else that is a part of the household that, that, that needs to do her share of the work. She runs out into the living room here and she, not, she does not confront Mary, but she confronts Jesus. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Where has Mary gone? Mary did not go very far. She was right there at the feet of Jesus, listening to his every word. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. What are we troubled about tonight? What are we worrying about tonight that is causing a distraction? Yes, it might be in our best interest to get certain things done, but to what extent, to, to what point are we trying to do and do and do and we end up leaving Jesus out of the picture? We very much may be in the church trying to get everything done in our ministry. And we are seeking to do everything, yes, to the best of our ability. And we want this to be done and we want that to be done. And we are so occupied in ministry that other aspects of our lives, time with Jesus is not priority. We are not balancing time with the guests. We are not spending time at the feet of Jesus. And so, oftentimes, we look at others and we say, but this person is not carrying his weight or that person is not doing this. And we complain. We don't take matters to the person up front. We might take it to somebody else. And sometimes these things cause a rift. The good thing is that Martha went to Jesus. But it, is, it seems as if Jesus was the distraction for Mary. Sometimes 
we cause ourselves embarrassment because the very thing we ought to be doing is the thing that we are not doing. We find time for everything else, but the one thing that we ought to be doing is left undone. So we are self-deceived. So Martha was distracted and she approached Jesus saying, Lord, do you care? Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? See, Mary knew who was Jesus. Not that Martha didn't know, but Mary had a, a more personal connection with Jesus. It was the same Mary who was being accused of being caught into the act of the adultery. It was the same Mary that when all would have rejected her, would have ready to put her to the point of death. It's the same Mary that would have experienced forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And that is why we must be all also ready to go to Jesus, find Jesus. No matter the, the weight of our guilt, we should find Jesus, sit at his feet, kneel at his feet if needs be, and pour out our hearts to him. He says in his word, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus is ready and willing to have mercy, to show pity and compassion unto his children, those who have fallen so far. We think we have fallen so far that we cannot come to a point where we are recognized that we are, we, are, we are part of the rejected and dejected, that nobody cares. And so the, the question was asked by Martha, Lord, do you not care? The songwriter also penned the song, Does Jesus Care? When my heart grows weary, when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and song, when everybody else is happy, I am just down and out. As the burdens press and the cares distress, and the way grows weary and long. Does Jesus care when my way grows dark with a nameless dread and fear? As the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? And the answer is, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. And so Mary very much knew who Jesus was because she would have had a connection with him. Martha was distracted with everything else. The most important thing at that time was to be closer to Jesus, at the feet of Jesus. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, oh, what words I hear him say. Happy place so near, so precious, may it find me there each day. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, I will look upon the past. For his love has been so gracious, it has won my heart at last. Bless me, O my Savior, bless me as I sit low at thy feet. O look down in love upon me, let me see thy face so sweet. We ought to make the feet of Jesus our dwelling place. The songwriter says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. 
I don't know about you or somebody tonight needs to be closer, drawn to the feet of Jesus, where we can find grace in time of need, in where we can find compassion, where we can find solace, where we can find peace. Because in, in, in a time as this, we are going through our crucibles and no better place to be than at the feet of someone who knows your very thoughts, who understands, who really understands what you and I are going through. See, Mary's battles are different from Martha's battles. And most times, persons who go through real hard times, you know, are the persons who have a deeper sense of Christ working, of, of, the, of, the, of what Jesus has to offer. And so that is why when temptations and trials come our way, rather than asking the Lord, you know, you're trying to pray it away, most times you should ask the Lord to take you through it rather than away from it because it's the trials that refines us, that, that teaches us, that helps us to stay closer to God. It's the trials that teach us who the burden bearer is. It's the trials that keeps us closer to the doors of heaven. It says, my grace is sufficient in your time of weakness. And so, Mary senses a deep longing, a, 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 a more, or she senses her weakness and her struggles. And so she knew that her guest, Jesus, was the only one who could help her. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. You see, Jesus vindicates Mary's choice. Here it is that finally someone acknowledges Mary for doing the right thing. And this affirmation will have gone a far way to her. Sometimes we, we are trying to do and we are trying to, to get everything done in a way that we can get affirmation from others. And it doesn't seem to come. It doesn't seem as if your work is appreciated. It doesn't seem as if you are being valued for what you have been doing over the years. Especially in the work of God. But Jesus, he sees and he knows all that you have been doing. Whether behind closed door or in the open. And so because... He sees and he knows all things. He knows the intentions and the motives of the heart. Then he is the rightful rewarder of our works. And that is why he says, Behold, I come quickly. And he comes not just quickly, but he comes with a reward to every man. Whether you would have done good works or evil, your reward is sure. And so, if we are not being affirmed by our closest friends, our families, or anyone else, know that God sees and He knows all things. And so, we should not give up. We should not be downhearted. We should not feel unappreciated, but know that whatever you do unto the glory of God, He will reward soon. And so, Mary has chosen that good thing. Ellen White wrote that the one thing Martha needed was a calm devotional spirit, a deeper anxiety for knowledge concerning the future 
immortal life and the graces necessary for spiritual advancement. What is it that we are look, um, yearning after? What is that one thing? Is it causing us a distraction or is it bringing us closer to the feet of Jesus? She also acknowledges that the world needs Martha's and her careful and energetic devotion as they work for God. But she also adds that we must first sit with Mary at the feet of Jesus. Let diligence, promptness, and energy be sanctified by the grace of Christ. Then the life will be an unconquerable power for good. So we have persons who are full of energy, full of vibrance, but it's not tempered by the grace of God. It's not controlled by the Holy Spirit. And so left uncontrolled, we'll just be a, a wild flame let loose. And so we need to learn diligence. We need to learn um, calmness. under the Holy Spirit. Jesus gives us the commission, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. But we must also remember that he would have invited us by saying, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There are those of us who we are so much caught up in doing work for God. That without balance, that sort of energy, we, we soon become burdened. And discouraged by what we are doing. Because we become distracted. We may think of going as such a burden because we have not yet really come to Christ. We have not yet learned to sit at Jesus' feet. To hang on every word. To find rest for our souls and help for our battles. Before we can go and minister to others, we must first come. When Jesus was um, leaving this earth, he told his disciples that they should tarry, they should wait on the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And then they will receive power to go. And it is the same remedy or, or, or it's the same formula for us today. We must come to Christ, learn from him, and then we can be empowered to go. Come, learn of me, and in this coming we begin the life eternal. Then she explains, the longer we are in the heaven of bliss the more and still more of glory will be open to us. And the more we know of God, the more intense will be our happiness. It's like you have some soldiers and they, they go out to battle. They, they, they just go because they are enlisted, they are called to, to go. And if they don't go, it's going to look bad on their their, their country and, and, and their family. And they're going half-heartedly. But for us to go, we must experience the joy of our salvation for ourselves. We must understand who we are and why we are called at such a time as this to work for our Savior. Still talking about spending time at the feet of Jesus. 
because we are spending so little time at the feet of Jesus. Our messages are dry. Our, our ministry is empty or dry because we're not doing it for the Savior who died. We're doing it because of doing sick. And so we need to know Christ for ourselves. Mary would have chosen the better thing. Not that Martha's efforts, not that Martha's zeal and energy is not needed, but a zeal and energy not balanced or controlled by the Holy Spirit will be just like a wildfire left loose. So, Jesus says, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. As we walk with Jesus in this life, we may be filled with his love and satisfied with his presence. May God help us that we will spend more time at the feet of Jesus. May we present our ministries, may we present our work life, our social life, our business life, whatever it is that we are given stewardship over that we will present it back to God, that we will spend time waiting for his direction, for his leading, so that we can better serve as he did while he was here. He says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Won't somebody take rest for their souls tonight? As we stand, we're going to sing and then we will pray. So we're going to sing. 593 In times like these you need a savior In times like these you need an anchor Be very sure Be very sure Your anchor holds and grips The solid rock In times like these You need a savior In times like these you need an anchor, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, Oh, be not idle, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds 
and grips the solid rock. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. Be very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Let us pray. O oh God, O oh Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the message tonight. That, dear God, we, our anchor needs to hold in times like these. We need to make sure that our life grips your life, the solid rock. As we would have tarried and we would have gone into your words, Lord, we recognize that we can be so close to you, but yet, Lord, we become distracted. That, dear God, we would have not chosen that one thing. And so, Lord, we pray that you help us to draw closer to your feet. Dear Lord, help us to have the desire, the yearning, O oh Lord, to receive from you knowledge, wisdom, understanding, guidance for this life. Help us, O oh God, that in our ministries, in our home, in our workplace, in our schools, in whatever areas of our lives, that we will always have you at the center of our decision-making. Dear God, we pray that you will continue to lead out, O oh Lord, in our, in our lives especially as we see the times are drawing closer to your coming. Help us, O oh God, that we will be very sure to have our anchor hold and grips the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we should leave this very place, that you will go before us, you will guide and protect us, and help us to meet back here, O oh God, another Sabbath, where we will open up, O oh God, our praises unto you. That, Lord, we will come rejoicing for all that you have been doing on our behalf. Take charge once more of the teachers, the students, Whatever capacity, O oh God, they are in, we pray, Lord, that you will enable them. You will give them the strength to cope, to lead, to follow, to do all that is necessary in this life so that we can meet you and be with you in the next. Have your own sweet way now, and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Discouraged, and why should the shadows come? 
Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Space.